I want to talk about a feature of the Delphi language that's been around actually I think since Delphi 20, 2009. Anonymous methods were, were added back then, probably around the same time we added generics. But it wasn't pervasive throughout the framework, but now it's become very pervasive. Um, FMX uses it, the RTL uses it. And so what is it? It's, it's a local function. It's an unnamed local function that you can pass as a parameter as a return value. So the way you, it's declared, um, I'm using the examples from T-directory here, is here's a filter predicate. It says reference to, that's the key there, the reference to means you're declaring an anonymous method. And the anonymous method is this function that will take a string and a t-search rut and return a boolean. And how do you use it? Well, here's an API that expects one such thing. Get files, you give it a path, and then it wants one of those predicates. Uh, I'll explain how it works. Um, so the way it works is you call get files, and you give it the directory where you want to get files, you want to search. It's basically what's doing behind the scene is find first, find next, if you remember the old APIs. But it wants to give you also the flexibility of selecting which files you really want to find. So, and the way you do that, you give it a little anonymous method. And that's, that's the example here. You just pass it a little function right inside as you're calling get files, you have a little function. And that function will do a little test. In, in this case, this function will check that the extension matches a particular extension in the here, pass files. The beauty of, of this is locality. I mean, the, the, the function you're writing is right there. You don't have to write a separate callback like the way we used to use function pointers before. And all a class and some members or something like that. It's, it's all local. It's very easy. You can read. You can see what you're doing. So how is this exposed in C++? Or maybe, well, I was going to show how how it works in Delphi, but once we switch to the ID, then I'll do both. I'll do the C++ and the, and the Delphi at the same time. Let's just talk about how are anonymous methods exposed in C++. Well, we kind of show you the underbelly. We show you what the Delphi compiler is really doing. Behind the scene, when you create an anonymous method, the Delphi compiler is actually creating a class. And in that class, there's a member called invoke. And that class implements a particular interface. And that interface is actually the anonymous method. It's the interface that manages the lifetime of that class that was created. Behind the scene, it's basically creating the class, putting all your code inside of a member called invoke, and then passing it to the receiver, to the, parameter, the, the API that expects the anonymous method. And then that API uses the interface to call invoke. And then when it's done, because of the way inter interfaces work, the ref count goes back down to zero, the class is deleted. Now, why is there a class? There's a class so that it can capture, meaning inside of that little local method, you can make reference to variables that are outside, like in the immediate scope or maybe even in the outer scope. And the class that will be created will actually capture those so that you can, the values of those variables can be used while you are in the local routines. So that's, that's the whole idea of the class. Now, for anybody who's familiar with recent C++ standards, or even just, I mean, lambdas have been around for a long time, would recognize that what I describe is very similar to a lambda, except in a lambda, there isn't an interface and a class. It's just a class. So I will get back to the lambda side. I want to show how we use to implement anonymous method before we had C++ 11. We would actually do exactly what I just described. You would create a class. It would implement the particular interface. You would write an invoke method. And that class, would its constructor would capture anything that you want to refer to inside of your invoke method. So on slide, that's not all so easy to see. So I'm going to go back to code and bring all that up. So let's see. Anonymous method, here we go. So I have two versions of this first. So I am going to scroll this code back a little bit. So there's an if zero at the top here. Oh, I, actually, I'll collapse it. We'll use the ID. So this is the old version of the code, OK? So I'm going to call get files here. And I want to pass it the predicate. But to pass it a predicate, I had to write a class called my filter predicate. And 
I had to, the class had to capture whatever I wanted to pass. And then I had to create the predicate here, pass it to get files. And then get files does the magic and it calls my method. And so I'm going to run this version of the code. OK. So here you can see that I called get files. I'm just going to show it a little more. Get files. And get files, of course, has a little helper do get files that called walk through directories that called do get files. And then here we end up in my code. We're calling a little thunk. That's the vir because it's a virtual method. And then now we're in my code. Here's the invoke. So that's how the whole thing worked. I give it an actual class. Well, I give it the interface. And it basically invokes the, the invoke method. And um, so I am going to set a little breakpoint here. So now my invoke is being called multiple times. I really want to set a breakpoint. Because I'm using Delphi, as I mentioned earlier, I guess you'll get to see what I haven't done. Uh, I need to link with the Delphi runtime. Okay. So even though this is a console app, I need to rent link with the Delphi runtime. So 32, I'm just going to set a breakpoint here. Now I'll step over that and we'll look at it. So we found zero files with CPP. Um, I know why. It's because one more time, because I switched to, to the platform that I wasn't expecting to, to run. Um, as you know, we create our EXEs not in the source directory, but two levels down. We create them in the, in the platform and then the config. So of course, since I'm using get current directory, which is where the CX is running, it didn't find any CPP files because there are no CPP files in that particular location. So I am going to switch the working directory to um, see, documents. So bucket arrow, studio, projects. Code range nine. Okay, so we will run from that directory this time. So I'll run this one more time and step over that. And yes, we found seven files. So and I, I, I mean, I could, I could step. Let's just um, run to here, and you can see the seven files are pretty much the files that I've shown you earlier, like the meta class we were looking at, and then the Delphi exceptions, and this is the CPP anon. So it just found a bunch of CPP files. So this is the old way of doing it. The old, by old way, I mean like creating a class and you know doing the, the hard work. So now I'm going to show you a method of doing it with lambdas. Um, I'm going to switch the if to 1. I'm going to switch back to 64-bit because to use Lambda, I need to be in 64-bit, which is why I was planning on running both things in 64, but for some reason, the breakpoint wasn't working. So, but the big change here is look at the code. It's very different now. I'm calling get files. I have this little helper routine called make anon method. It's a little bit of magic in here, and bear with me. I'll explain how it works. And then I have an actual lambda right here. This is lambda. In the lambda, the first thing is a square brackets. You tell it what you want to capture. So I want to capture ext, which is this. And then the lambda will take a string path and a stretch rec, and it returns bool. So I'm using the new C++11 um, uh, arrow and then the return type. And then I have my little function. And then I can refer to ext, which is here. So let's um, set a breakpoint here and run this. So it's going to rebuild it. And here I am. I am in my Lambda, being called from Delphi. Get files, do files, walk through here, and then method reference, and then main operator open paren, close paren. Now, main colon colon dollar sign under bar zero is just the way that Clang mangles lambdas. So it uses the name of the function where the lambda was created, and then it just goes dollar signs under bar zero, dollar sign one, dollar sign two, dollar sign three, and so forth. So, and the operator open front close paren, that's how lambdas are implemented in, in, uh, in C++. Like I said earlier, Delphi has a class with an invoke method, whereas 
C++ Lambda is of functors, meaning they have operator, open paren, um, open paren, close paren. They have a function operator, the function call operator. So that's where I ended up here. I'm in the function call operator. Now the magic of what's beautiful here is Delphi thought it was calling an interface. It was, but the interface magically wrapped a lambda around it. Now the reason why I need this little glue code, the make anon meth, is simply because I didn't want to cheat and show you something that you do not have. That code needs to go in the Delphi interface header. It needs to go in sysdobj.h. But since we haven't shipped the version that has that, so I'm showing you a version that basically is something that you can do today. So what I did is I put the code in something called method ref here. Um, so I'm going to bring up method ref so you can see it's not a lot of glue. A little complicated, but we're using Veradic template forwarding. And uh, so make anon will create a Delphi interface. But what a Delphi interface is just an interface. You need a class that implements that interface. What class are we going to use? We're actually going to use a class here from method reference impl. It will implement the invoke method, but it does it using variadic templates. So when you tell Clang, I want a lambda that takes a string and a search rec and it returns a bool. This little magic basically creates an interface with an invoke method with exactly the same signature, something that returns a bool and takes a string and a search rec. And then it grabs the lambda that you passed in, stores it over here, and calls it from that invoke method. So if, if this is not very clear, that's okay. I mean, none of you will have to deal with this because in a future version, we're just going to take that code, drop it inside of the header, at which point you won't need this little glue even. You won't need this, this line here. I actually have a version of that. I just didn't, didn't bring it here. I, I, I'm using a version of the, of the header which, which matches the one that ships. Um, and this glue goes away and you can just slam, slap the little lambda right in the middle of, um, of, of the, the parameter where the parameter is expected. And then it would remove that extra paren also here. So this will go away and this goes away. So it'll be very, very, very similar to the Delphi version. So I'm only going to switch back to the slides and, and show that. Here's the, 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 the version that we just ran with the Lambda interface. Here's the Delphi version. You can see get files passing a function inside here. And then here's the C++ version. Besides the make anon meth, the rest is just you know, a Lambda. As a final example, this is something that I did yesterday. Um, I'm going to take one of the examples that David had on his talk for the threading, and I'm going to show a wicked case of lambda. I'm going to do a lambda within a lambda, and I'm going to do captures. So this is from David's talk. We're going to run a task in the background, and the task takes a procedure that it wants to run. So I'm going to run a lambda in that procedure. That procedure is going to sleep and then increment a value. But then when it's done, in, done incrementing the value, it's going to synchronize back to the main thread. And to synchronize back, I'm going to create another lambda for the synchronization. And here I'm going to print the date and time and say that I'm working away. And the key part here is when you want to capture variables that are part of a class, you actually capture this. You see here I'm capturing this. So this means the first lambda will have access to the variables of T form 42. The second lambda captures this, but also captures i. i is a local variable, a loop counter in the first lambda. The second lambda is going to capture it because I'm going to use i to determine whether I'm done or not because i is the number of iterations. So um, anyway, the whole thing probably will be a little easier to understand once I run it. So here, this will start the task with the two lambdas in it. This will just print the value of the value variable. So I'm just going to show it. Value is zero here, okay? And I'm going to start the background task. Remember, the code is, is basically working away. So each time I print value as incremented, if you see, like, I'm working and it's working, I'm working and it's done. 
So now to kind of show you what's happening, so let's put a breakpoint here in the first lambda and call it. I'm going to boom. So now it's it started. I've clicked, and here's the breakpoint. So now you see where I am. And I'm going to show something very interesting here. I'm in a lambda. I'm going to watch this. I want to see what the this of a lambda has. Yeah, it's a class. And what does it have? Oh, this this has another member called this. Guess what happened? The class that the lambda created captured the this of the outer and named it this. I mean, it is, it's not really named this, but it's not code, so it doesn't matter. It's, there's no parser, there's no Alexa that's going to get confused there, but I, I should have shown that in the other example also, because you would have seen when I, when I stopped in the Lambda that it captured the variable ext, which was the extension. So this is Lambdas and Delphi Anonymous methods. There are a lot of features of the C++11 standard that consuming Delphi code I wouldn't say very easy, but easier. Lambdas is one of them. 